Last month, the Republican leader spent a great deal of time talking about the importance of keeping one's word. I agree without any question that senators and everyone else should keep their word. And I also believe that a deal is a deal, a contract is a contract, an arrangement is an arrangement, a bargain is a bargain. And as long as each party to such an agreement holds up his end of the bargain, senators should stick to their word. But an agreement is a two-way street. If one party fails to uphold their end, the agreement, of course, is null and void. The Republican leader wants everyone to believe, and he's made many statements here on the floor that I have not responded to, that I've broken my word. But he neglects to recall his own commitments in his own words. Remember, an agreement is a two-way street. So let's take a closer look at what the Republican leader committed to do. Let's look at the agreement we entered into together on the floor of this body, the United States Senate. In a colloquy at the beginning of this Congress, January of this year, January 24th, I, I committed not to amend the standing rules of the Senate except through regular order. During that colloquy, Senator McConnell also made a commitment. Senator McConnell committed to end a constant Republican obstruction and return the Senate to a time when nomination were processed more efficiently. This is what he said, and this is a quote. On the subject of nominations, Senate Republicans will continue to work with the majority to process nominations, consistent with the norms and traditions of the Senate. Closed quote. And I replied here on the floor, the two leaders will continue to work together to schedule votes on nominees in a timely manner by unanimous consent, except in extraordinary circumstances. Remember, Mr. President, an agreement is an agreement. A contract is a contract. A bargain is a bargain. The Republican leader also pledged, and I quote, this Congress should be more bipartisan than the last Congress. He promised to, I quote, work with the majority to process nominations. He committed that, quote, the two leaders will continue to work together to schedule votes by, on nominees in a timely manner by unanimous consent, except in extraordinary circumstances, close quote. Those were his words. Those were his commitments. Those were his promises. By any objective standard, they've been broken. Let's take a look at the record, part of the record at least. Exactly three weeks after Senator McConnell committed to process nominees consistent with the norms and traditions of the Senate, he led Republicans in an unprecedented filibuster of the Secretary of Defense, a highly qualified nominee, somebody that we served with here in this body. So nothing could be a starker violation of a commitment to return to the norms and traditions of the Senate than launching the first ever in the history of our republic, a filibuster of Secretary of Defense. What's more, Republicans obstructed the nominee because of completely unrelated issues, and despite the fact that the nominee, Chuck Hagel, was a war hero from the Vietnam conflict and a former Republican senator from Nebraska. Confirmation of cabinet secretaries used to be free from obstruction, once in a while, there would be something, but not very often, Mr. President. But under President Obama, cabinet nominees have faced unprecedented obstruction and significant delays in assuming their positions. Not a single cabinet nominee was filibustered in President Carter's administration. Not a single cabinet secretary nominee was filibustered in President George H.W. Bush's administration. One cabinet secretary was filibustered in the Reagan administration. And only one cabinet secretary was filibustered in President George W. Bush's administration. But already, in the Obama administration, four cabinet secretaries have been filibustered, and more filibusters are likely. Remember, Mr. President, he still has three and a half years to go in his term of office. Yet the Republican leader says, there's no problem here. Status quo is fine. Republicans were willing to risk national security for the sake of Tea Party politics when considering the Hegel nomination. And they're willing to risk it again when considering the nomination of John Brennan to lead the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. This obstruction has continued at every level and through creative new methods. 
even before President Obama's nominations reached the Senate floor, Senate Republicans bogged them down with unreasonable demands, terribly kind, time consuming. And they're designed to be, if not unattainable, really hard and difficult. Tom Perez, this is a man who worked as a garbage man to put himself through school. He hauled garbage. He's the president's nominee for Secretary of Labor. He received, after the public hearing, more than 200 questions for the record. These are not easy questions. They're not single line questions. Jack Lew, the president's nominee for Secretary of Treasury, was asked more than 700 questions before he was confirmed. Previously, Secretaries of Treasury were just whipped through here with just a handful of questions. Now, Jack Lew's being held up again for another position he wants, International Monetary Fund. Gina McCarthy, after a full hearing, took quite a while to get arranged because uh, the chairman of the committee wanted to make sure that the ranking member was satisfied with the time and witnesses and all that. Uh, she was asked to lead the Environmental Protection Agency. She had more than 1,100 questions. My colleague, the minority leader, wants to claim credit for letting some nominees proceed. But the fact that he seeks credit for approving some nominees only highlights the extent of the problem. Confirming nominees should be the norm, not the exception. Remember the agreement he and I worked in? Worked in we, talked about here on the floor, the president deserves to have his or her term in place. There are currently 15 executive branch nominees ready to be confirmed by the Senate after long stalling in many different ways. They've been waiting more than 260 days. This president added up, that's about nine months for confirmation. At this point, President Bush's second term, the Senate confirmed three times as many executives as for President Obama. The gridlock Republicans have created is not only bad for President Obama and bad for the Senate, it's bad for this country. The Republican leader has failed to live up to his commitments. The American people are really fed up with gridlock, fed up with obstruction, and fed up with these politics as usual. They want Washington to work again for American families. So I try every day of my life to be on their side. I wait wait, but I'm not going to wait another month, another few weeks, another year for Congress to take action on the things that we have been doing for 200 and almost 40 years.